Hello and welcome to my next video on cellular control. Right, A gene is a section of DNA that codes for one or more polypeptides. A polypeptide is a chain of proteins, also known as a polymer. Genes code for a lot of things like structural proteins, hemoglobin, antibodies, cell surface receptors, antigens, um, actin and myosin and muscle cells, tubulin, channel proteins, electron carriers and enzymes. So they're very important. Now the DNA code consists of four bases. Cytosine, guanine, thymine and adenine. Except thymine is replaced by uracil in RNA. Now one amino acid is coded for by a triplet base code. That is three amino acids. Now why we use three? Well, there are three, but we have four different bases. So, four bases to the power of three equals 64. There are 64 different combinations of four bases, so they're arranged with three in a triplet. Now, they can be in any order, so CCG is different to GCC, just because it's back to front, obviously. Now, there are only about 20 amino acids that we use. So 64 combinations of 20 amino acids, so there's plenty. If, for example, we only had three base codes, there'd only be 27 amino acids, so there's not as many. And as the important reason why you want an excess is that with 64, you would have a degenerate code. This means that all amino acids will be coded for by one or more triplet base code, which we'll look at a bit later. Right, protein synthesis. There are two main steps transcription, which happens inside the nucleus, and translation, which happens in the cell. Before I go on to transcription, just some general notes. Transcription uses mRNA, which is messenger RNA. It's made in the nucleus. Three adjacent bases are called a codon, and it carries the genetic code from the DNA in the nucleus to the cytoplasm. In translation, you have transfer RNA, tRNA, which is found in the cytoplasm. It has an amino acid binding site at one end and a sequence of three bases at the other called an anticodon. It carries the amino acids that are used to make proteins to the ribosomes during translation. So, what happens in transcription? RNA polymerase attaches to DNA. It will attach it to the beginning of the gene to the, and it'll be the DNA double helix. It hasn't unwound yet. The hydrogen bonds between the two DNA strands in the gene break. These are between the C and G bases and the A and T bases. This separates the strands and the DNA molecule uncoils at that point. One of the strands is then used as a template to make an R mRNA copy. The RNA polymerase lines up free RNA free floating RNA nucleotides alongside the template strand. Commonly base pairing means that mRNA strand ends up being a complementary copy of the DNA template strand but as we said U replaces T so we'll look at that in, in a little bit. Once the RNA nucleotides are paired up with their specific bases on the DNA strand they're joined together forming an RNA molecule. So you have all these different bases and they join together to form one long strand. The RNA polymerase moves along the DNA separating the strand and assembling the mRNA strand. The hydrogen bonds between the uncoiled strands of DNA reform once the RNA polymerase has passed by and the strands coil back into a double helix. When RNA polymerase reaches a stop codon, and this is a special sort of codon which it basically does what it says on the tin, stops the process, it stops making mRNA and detaches from the DNA. The mRNA moves out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore and attaches to a ribosome and then that is the next stage. Translation. So, the mRNA attaches itself to a ribosome, and tRNA molecules carry amino acids to the ribosome. A tRNA molecule with an anticodon that's complementary to the first codon on the mRNA attaches itself to the mRNA by complementary base pairing. This most important fact is anything in DNA is always due to complementary base pairing. A second tRNA molecule attaches itself to the next codon on the mRNA in the same way. The two amino acids attached to the tRNA molecules are joined by a peptide bond in a condensation reaction. The first tRNA molecule moves away, leaving its amino acid behind. And this just continues until the polypeptide chain has been made. So,
So, DNA, mRNA, and tRNA. I've just come up with a random code here. DNA of CCG, ATG, CAT. Now, the complementary base code for mRNA would therefore be GGC. G binds with C, C binds with G. UAC, because A binds with T. U binds with A, because remember U replaces T. And GUA, I'll just give an example. The GUA there is a codon. tRNA, then is complementary base pairing to mRNA, so CCG, AUG, CAU. This is an anticodon CAU. So tRNA will almost be exactly the same as the DNA strand, except any T's are replaced by U's. Now, here's the thing I saw about degenerate. I chose a random amino acid of cysteine, cysteine, um, and that can be coded for with the code TGT or TGC. Now, what's important about this degenerate base code is that let's say you ha let's say you have the TGT code in your chain, and there was a mutation; it forms TGC. It means that you still code for the same amino acid, no problem. And I mean, let's say the final um, base on those three is going to be changed or it just a random base is going to be added on it's going to mutate it's got a 50 50 chance of still making the same the same uh, code or the same amino acid there are some like leucine which can be coded for by six different codes and that's tt tta ttg ctt cc ctc cta and ctg so example in that one, you have CT, and then the final one can be any base, and it'll still code for the same one. And there's a lot like that. In fact, I believe there's only one amino acid which is code coded for by one triplet code, and that is methionine, which is only ATG. Now, this diagram here is a molecule, is the structure of tRNA. You have the amino acid at the end for the amino acid binding site, and the other side you have the complementary base pairs of CAU. In that case, that is the anticodon. So, mutations. A mutation is a change in the amount of, or arrangement of, the genetic material in a cell. There are two types of mutations. You have DNA mutation or chromosome mutation. Now, chromosome mutations involve changes to the structure of, chromos of chromosomes and or to their number. DNA mutations are changed to genes due to changes in the nucleotide base sequence. At this stage, we're only going to look at DNA mutations. In the next video, we'll look a little bit more at chromosome. So here, a lot of different codes here. Start off with the normal ATG, CAG, TAC, normal. On the next one, you've had a base substitution, ACG. So only one base has changed. Now. I've chosen one randomly, but it'll be interesting to see if it makes any difference. Um, right, ATG codes for valine. And what? Wait, sorry. Sorry, ATG codes for, oh, um, methionine. Methionine. Oh, bloody names. Um, so here we've been unlucky because it's now changed to theronine. So in this case, there is a difference in the protein structure. But for all we know, there might not have been. But I was just unlucky in that one. Deletion is when one base is deleted. So here, the in a normal code, you have CAG. It's become just CG. The A has been deleted. And in the next one, an A has been added. Now, these are the most... These can be some of the worst types of mutations because it affects the whole sequence from then on. So... If it's, let's say it's what happened on the second amino acid in a chain of 400 amino acids, the next, you know, 398 amino acids are also changed. So the whole structure is completely destroyed. If it happens on the last one, there might not be such a difference, but still, it can cause a big effect. I mean, in this um, circumstance, the second um, amino acid in the normal one, CAG, is glutamine. But we've changed it to CGT, which is arginine, so completely different. On the next one, CAA, which is glutamine. So in the additional one, nothing changed to the second amino acid. But in the deletion one, something did. Duplication. This is just when an amino acid is duplicated. So in this case, you have ATG, ATG.
Now what this means is that the same amino acid is made twice, that might not make a huge amount of difference. And then inversion, that's when if you have CAG becomes GAC. Now what effect does this have? CAG is glutamine, and then it turns to GAC, um, which is asparatic, asparatic acid. So yet again there, that's quite a big change. So the best one, the best sort of mutation is a substitution. Now, mutations can be beneficial, harmful, or neutral. We've looked at the neutral ones. That is when the you have a mutation, but the amino acid sequence doesn't change. Now, you can have beneficial ones. So, for example, when a bacteria mutates a, a gene that's resistant to antibiotics, that's an advantage and then it'll be passed on via natural selection. We can have harmful mutations. Cystic fibrosis is the deletion of three bases that code for the CFTP protein. The protein folds incorrectly. This causes the protein to be broken down. This leads to excess mucus production, which affects lungs of cystic fibrosis sufferers. So that's just some examples. There, there are many more Look in your textbook or online. The lac operon. Now this is an interesting thing. There are loads of different operons, but we just look at the lac operon as an example. And this is found in E. coli. So protein synthesis can be controlled by the genetic on the genetic level by altering the rate of transcription of genes. Now in this case, the lac operon has something to do with activating or preventing genes being made. An operon is a section of DNA that controls structural genes, con control elements, and sometimes a regulatory gene. The, the structural genes code for useful proteins, such as enzymes. They're all transcribed together. That means you can't, in this case, Z and Y are structural genes. Z can't be made and not Y, for example. The control elements include a promoter, a DNA sequence located before the structural genes that RNA polymerase binds to, and an operator, a DNA sequence that proteins called transcription factors bind to. The regulatory gene codes for a transcription factor, a protein that binds to DNA and switches genes on or off by increasing or decreasing the rate of transcription. Factors that increase the rate are called activators, and those that decrease the rate are called repressors. Now, in the example we're looking at, we're looking at repressor. So, Regulator protein that will you'll, you'll see diagram in a bit that will create and transcribe a repressor protein. The repressor protein will then bind to the operator, preventing RNA polymerase binding to the promoter, so transcription can't occur. And this means that the structural genes Z, which codes for the enzyme beta galactosidase, and Y, which is lactose permease. Just so you know, beta galactosidase catalyzes the hydrolysis of lactose to glucose and galactose and the protein lactose permease transports lactose into the cell. So very briefly with lactose the uh, lactose binds to the repressor protein so it can't bind to the operator without lactose in the culture medium the repressor protein is made binds to the operator and blocks transcription. That's the very basic so how does that happen? Here's a diagram without without lactose in this medium the, you have the regulatory gene create well is transcribed produces mRNA goes to the ribosome creates the repressor protein it binds to the operator section which partially blocks the promoter region so RNA polymerase cannot bind transcription cannot occur with now where you what you have to always remember is that you always start off without lactose so for example even if well, even, even if there is lactose from the start, you always consider that there is no lactose. So it starts off from a point of zero lactose. Then the second lactose is added, even if it's immediately, even if the second you're looking at it, lactose will start somewhere. Now, this causes, well, firstly, the mRNA is still made by the regulatory gene, still goes into ribosome to produce a repressor protein. But the lactose then binds to repressor protein as an inhibitor. Now this changes the shape of the repressor protein so it can no longer bind to the operator region. At the same time, the repressor protein is removed from the operator region and lactose binds to it again.
This means that the RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter region, transcription occurs. Now why I said you have to always think of it from an area of without lactose is because the repressor protein is still there. And then the second lactose is added, it then is removed. So that's why you need to think of it like that. Protein activation, very briefly. This is caused by cyclic AMP or CAMP. Now this can bind to some proteins changing the 3D shape and this can activate a protein for example with an enzyme it might bind to the enzyme and cause the active, act, active site to open up so that it can actually accept the, the substrate. Just very brief thing you need to know. Body plans. A body plan is the general structure of an organism. So we used it, always used examples of Drosophila fruit fly. has various body parts, the head, the abdomen, legs, wings, all arranged in a particular way. Proteins control the development of a body plan. They help set up the basic body plan so that everything's in the right place. Legs grow where legs should grow. Now these are controlled and coded for by the homeobox genes. So two homeotic gene clusters control the development of the Drosophila body plan. One controls the development of the head and anterior thorax and the other controls the development of the posterior thorax and the abdomen. And then there are lots of different examples found in different animals. Um, now the, the picture in your book shows um, on page 115 that a fruit fly has antennae that look like legs because the homeobox genes aren't working right and it's made well the body think that there should be legs growing there that's all that is and apoptosis this is programmed cell death the cell produces enzymes to break down important parts of the cell the cell shrinks and breaks up in small bits and is then engulfed by phagocytosis and digested now this is due to the Hayflick limit that's saying that the cell can divide 52 times before it dies except stem cells and cancer cells so Essentially, just to repeat, enzymes break down important parts of the cell, particularly the cytoskeleton. The cytoplasm becomes dense and organelles tightly packed. The cell surface membrane changes in small bits called blebs form. It's just small bits on it. Chromatin condenses and the nuclear envelope breaks. DNA breaks into fragments. The cell breaks into vesicles and these are taken up by phag phagocytosis. The cellular debris is disposed of and does not damage any other cells or tissues. And this happens very quickly. Now this is, this is controlled by a diverse range of cell signals, some of which come from inside the cells and some from outside. These cells include cytokines made by cells of the immune system, hormones, growth factors and nitric oxide. Nitric oxide can induce apoptosis by making the inner mitochondrial membrane more permeable to hydrogen ions, anticipating the proton gradient. Proteins are released into the cytosol. These proteins bind to apoptosis inhibitor proteins and allow the process to take place. So there's a number of facts which cause it to happen. Now why is this important? It can remove unwanted structures during growth. So for example the digits on your hand, the fingers, they're all fused together until ap apoptosis occurs and splits them. But also cells have to die otherwise you get an uncontrolled growth. If none of your cells ever died you just continue growing forever and ever. Equally it does too much apoptosis you would just die because all your cells would be killed and that's that so in conclusion protein synthesis you have transcription occurs inside the nucleus translation in the cytoplasm mutations occur to the dna sequence and to chromosomes lac operon is an example of an operon which controls protein um well what proteins are synthesized when body plans make sure that everything's in the right place and apoptosis makes sure you don't con grow uncontrollably and everything dies when it needs to so that's all thank you for watching if as usual any questions ask email my emails in the description and like comment subscribe thank you for watching and goodbye